So for the longest time, I've had these AC clamp meters that measure current. And I've wanted to hook these up to my house forever. But I've never been actually get, be able to get them to work until recently. I also have smaller individual ones, uh, which will measure specific parts of the house. And they all connect to my Pico with a Wi-Fi module on. This will connect to my home assistant instance, and this will be able to measure my house power consumption. So Now, what it looks like is a little board with two ADCs on here. These are ADS-1115s, and what's cool about these is they can use differential signals. So for my AC clamps like this, normally what I'd have to do is I'd have to bring them up to a positive range to actually make them work. But with this on the back, I just have my burden resistor and then they connect directly to the ADC. I don't have to do anything fancy. Now, the other cool thing about this ADC is it has a higher bit rate. So it's a 16-bit ADC, so one of those bits being signed and 15 bit digits of significance. Um, the only problem with this is I found that it's quite slow. You can only do around 850 samples per second, which is vastly slower than uh, a normal Raspberry Pi ADC. So now on to the actual code of the project before we see this in action. So this right here is Thorny, which is the IDE that is default to use for MicroPython. So currently I have installed MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi and I have three different files. So this picocode.py, this is all the main code to actually run the project. So this has my loop where I'm doing my ADC reads and this is like the meat of what I've written. Now I've got two other files, this ads1115.py. Um, I've grabbed this from a other project and I basically added it to the library of the Pico so I can use all of these functions in my Pico code. And lastly, I have all the cons for the project. So this will house the Wi-Fi password and ID and the information for the MQTT server. All right. So back to the actual main code of the project. And it's all grouped up into what's actually happening. So since we need, to, since this is a Wi-Fi project, first thing we've got to do is connect it up to the Wi-Fi. Um, the only thing interesting about this is I've got this little try. At least on my Wi-Fi, it never actually connects on the first try. So I just keep trying until it actually connects. All right, next we connect to our MQTT instance, which is connected to our home assistant. And then this block of code is a class to do the ADC reads. And basically, because this device is a MUX input, so we can, even though we have theoretically a max of four inputs, we only can do one at a time. The approach I took was to do a whole bunch of reads and then average them out through a root mean square average. So the sequence of events is we're going to do a whole bunch of reads and at the end you're going to get a voltage which based on the ADC what the range is will get you a current level. So if we go down just a little bit further we can see that. So these TED clamps have a gain of one which sets the range between a negative 4.096 to positive 4.096. So that gives our theoretical max for the ADC. 
Now, this clamp I have will never reach 4.096, it will only ever reach three. And at three, it's 200 amps. So basically, what we have to do every time is we get a voltage and then we subtract our max current by our max voltage to get the current per increment and we times that by the voltage to get our current. And from there, what we'll do is it'll, it's part of this MQTD ADC object. So it does the read, gets the amps, then converts it to watts. I currently don't have a, um, a way to measure voltage in my home circuit, so I'm just gonna assume it's 120. And then what we have to do is we times that by 1000 to get the kilowatts, which is what Home Assistant uses to measure the amount of power that's consumed in the house. And then I just have a little thing that says, if your system is significantly low uh, measurement, we'll just count that as zero because when you get these ADCs to their lower range, they're not that accurate. And then we just make it a string and then publish it up to the MQTT instance. And that's based on this guy right here. So this topic pub is part of this. So it's main. So what this will look like is we're gonna be publishing to main dot uh, main power slash left main and it's just going to be a value so it's going to be some instance like 0 0.00156 or something like that 53 and it's just going to be the single number that will make it easier for home assistant to parse it and from there we just keep looping constantly. So in every every few seconds we'll switch which ADC is doing the reads and publishing their data. Okay, so now we'll switch to actually seeing this in action. All right, so here's my setup and here's where in the video I have to describe that. If you don't feel comfortable doing something like this, it's probably best not to do it. Uh, because in my test setup, we have this live wire that I sliced the shielding off of it so I could expose the wire for this clamp to actually go on to. So if that makes you uncomfortable, then <laughs> it's probably not the project for you. Um, but I wanted to show you the things I would use to actually test this. So for the load, I've got an Instapot here, um, which puts on a quite significant load for these kind of clamps I'm using. Um, this clamp over the here is for 100 amps, so having something that I think can pull more than at least, you know, more than a few amps is good for um, testing purposes. I also have a watt meter here, which is cool because it can give me the voltage, the amps, the watts and the hertz of the system. So what I would normally do is you'd put amps and you would, you would have to compare what you got on the screen to what um, the meter is working with. I got this device here, which allows me to put on uh, one of these clamps here like this, and then I can measure the voltage, uh, I mean the amperage so I could um, test to make sure it was working. Um, this one specifically, I didn't realize, is designed just to do uh, times 10. So that's why we're getting an amperage here and not amperage here. Um, um, one thing to note when you're doing this kind of testing, make sure you always have your clamp plugged in to your Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, 
Well, at least for um, the ones without the burden resistor. Otherwise, you could potentially damage the clamp uh, because what will happen is if there's no load, there's nothing other than the impedance in the wires that will force the voltage to go down. So I started up my Instapod to show you the load and what it looks like in Home Assistant. I disabled these two guys here because I only have enough space for two different clamps. Um, and what we see is four sensors that we can see the active power they're consuming. Now, this is cool for seeing what is currently being consumed, but this energy distribution is what will be the more useful thing down the line. Now, this part takes a little bit longer to actually update. And I have an example. There's an energy dashboard. We can go back a few days so we can see the when it's grouped up, what the power can look like. And you can imagine more graphs and bars down the line. And to get something like this, what we have to do is we have to go into settings. And we have to edit the config. So I have an add-on, which you can get down here, which will allow me to configure the file within the web page. So we go up here, go into config.yaml, and <laughs> that's my Instapod if you hear that in the background. Um, we have essentially four entries um, and one for the actual sensor that grabs the data here and sets the state and then the template value, which I think that has to do more with the, the UI side of things. So this is setting up the value. This is handling, setting up the state for the UI to actually handle it. Um, other key things is we're setting it to make sure it's an energy, uh, total increasing, we need this to be set or otherwise the energy dashboard won't accept it. And the energy dashboard looks like um, dashboard energy. So here's where you'll actually add the devices that will be counted in your consumption energy panel. Um, so in that configuration, it needs to be set up a very specific way such that it, it will show up as a option to consume the power. Um, so most likely it'll take you a few tries to configure that con config file. Um, so after you're done configuring the file, if you go to the developer tools, check the configuration and then restart, all the uh, values that you set in that file will then update automatically and reload. Okay, so it's been a while since I've uh, set up a home assistant instance and a few little bugs I came across the line was this instance is running on my, um, my personal computer and it's not currently on a Pi um, as a instance, like there's a home assistant image and that's not currently what I'm running with. Currently I have a um, a virtual box image of a uh, home assistant. So that pops up an image like this to give me an IP and all that. Um, and why I went this route versus the Docker route, which I would actually prefer, um, at least for a final production is because in the Docker instance, you can't actually do add-ons. So I couldn't get the Mesquite broker. Um, the file editor I could live with that. I could do that internally, but I couldn't use the Mesquite broker 
when I use the Docker instance of Home Assistant. Uh, so one thing I'll be looking into further down the line is how do I um, link up a Docker instance of Home Assistant with a Docker instance of Mosquito Browser so then I can put this on my larger server and I don't have to um, worry about uh, you know all the problems that happen when you don't have Docker instances. So this is my current state of affairs with this project. Uh, once I start using it, there'll potentially be more updates down the line. Uh, but um, this is that's what I got so far. So hopefully you found somewhat of this useful.